This is Yarbo and it's the world's first automated yard robot. It's a modular device that you can attach a bunch of different pieces to for all kinds of yard work. So right now I'm gonna be testing out the snowblower module. So it's called Yarbo, I think S1. I saw this thing at CES and it immediately caught my interest because I live in Calgary, Alberta where it snows and I hate shoveling. So for me, this thing is important. So I need to see how well it works. So that's what we're doing out here today. We just had some snow for the last two days and I've decided to try it out to test it out, see how well it works. The main body came in a well-packaged box and inside that there was a user manual, a quick start guide, an AC charger, fabric cover and everything needed to set up the RTK GPS navigation system. My first impression of the universal body was that it was quite heavy, even without a battery inside of it. After taking out the universal body, the next thing to do is prepare to install the battery pack into it, which by the way, also comes with the core package that the company offers. It uses lithium ion and by itself weighs around 22 pounds. It's also been designed to function in temperatures as low as negative 30 degrees, which is nice considering it'll be used a lot during the winter season. To install it, all you have to do is connect it to the cable inside the battery cabin on the universal body. The last thing to do here is bolt up the battery cabin to prevent theft, since Yarbo is an outdoor equipment. Let's quickly take a look at the hardware on the universal body. The first thing I noticed were all the labels on it full of warnings and simple directions on how to safely handle it. There's two antennas topside which will need to be assembled in order to use the RTK GPS system. For advanced safety, Yarbo has two built-in cameras on both sides of it and uses millimeter wave radar for sensing obstacles and people within its path. On the back side, there's an emergency lever which can be pulled to manually stop Yarbo at any time. There's also two status indicator lights and a small enclosure hiding the power switch and a charging port for the wired AC adapter. On the opposite side of that, there's a cable that connects the universal body to all its different modular parts. There's four shafts in the same area for securing the snowblower module to the main body. The track the robot uses are made from anti-slip rubber, which is considered to be good for a lot of terrains. All right, now that we've checked out the universal body, let's take a look at the modules they're currently offering right now, which is a trifecta that's great for year round yard maintenance. At the time of this video, only the snowblower module is being shipped out to customers with the lawnmower and the leaf blower modules all estimated to arrive in May. Keep in mind that the universal body can't be used by itself without at least one of these modules. I was only able to get my hands on the snowblower module, so that's going to be my main focus throughout this video. Now, similar to the universal body, the snowblower module also came packaged very nicely. Inside it, there was a clean out tool, a discharge chute, and the module itself. I noticed that it wasn't nearly as heavy as the universal body, but it was still slightly uncomfortable to handle single-handedly, especially since you're not supposed to hold onto the soft bumper bar that goes across the entire front. This bumper is the last line of defense for the robot when using the snowblower module, preventing the auger from making contact with people or animals. Besides the bumper, there's also two headlights and a camera for smart obstacle detection on the front side. I noticed that the headlights come in really handy at nighttime, making it easier for Yarbo to see. The auger and scraper, which does most of the work, can also be found in front of the module. On the opposite side, you'll find matching connectors for the four shafts on the universal body. There's also labels all over the body of the snowblower module, similar to the ones on the main body for providing guidance for safe handling. Lastly, there are two handles on it that help with connecting to the main body, since there's really nowhere else to grab onto it from. That's kind of all there is to know about the snowblower on its own, but when hooked up to the universal body, things get really interesting. Now, before turning anything on, the first thing you want to do is attach the module you plan on using to the main body, which in this case is a snowblower. The user manual for Yarbo documents the entire setup process, and there's also videos on the branch channel for a more visual approach, but let's quickly go over it. First off, there's an enclosure on the snowblower, which you'll have to open up to reveal the port that the cable on the main body connects to. Then you want to bring the S1 module close to the main body since the cable isn't very long. Once the cable is connected, you want to lock off the enclosure. This is to prevent things like snow or dirt from getting in there. Next up, you want to connect the holes on the module to the four shafts on the main body until it clicks in. There's two locks on both sides of the S1 module for checking if the front piece is actually secure. The last thing to do is hook up the snow discharge chute. Now, there's a piece on it called the snow plume diverter, which can be removed for when dealing with wet snow. Dry snow is more common and also what we had here the night before, so I decided to leave it on there. 
To install the discharge chute, first you want to line it up with the opening on the snowblower module using the alignment arrows. Then you want to tighten all six screws around it to secure it on there. The last thing to do is connect the string that enables controlling the angle of the chute during use. At this point, the Arbo is pretty much ready to be used. The Arbo uses three different technologies to secure internet connection. There's Wi-Fi, 4G cellular, and then there's LoRa. The system will automatically choose the most stable method between the three in order to adapt to different changing environments. Wi-Fi is the most commonly used. 4G can be used with your phone's data plan when Wi-Fi isn't available. And LoRa is the most prioritized by the system when available because it can maintain a stable connection for over 100 meters in harsh outdoor environments. Keep in mind that LoRa can only be used after setting up the RTK GPS system. I decided to start out by testing out the manual mode, which can be done either using the physical controller or the app controller. Before using either one, you want to first add the Arbo to the mobile app. This is easy to do once you've downloaded it through iOS or Android store. After registering an account and adding Yarbo to the app, the first thing you want to do is update the firmware on it to the latest one for proper operation. Once that's done, you're presented with a user interface that provides real-time information on Yarbo like network strength, battery level, and the system's general operating status at any time. To use the robot autonomously, you'll want to create a map which can also be done through the app, but will require installing the RTK GPS system for accurate positioning. You can also access a manual controller with all sorts of controls, including a joystick through a separate tab on there as well. Yarbo also comes with a person detection feature which can be turned on or off through the app's settings menu. Whenever it's enabled and a person or an obstacle is detected, it'll notify you by voice repeatedly and the robots will become immobile. This feature is very essential for an autonomous equipment like this one, so I'm glad it was prioritized. After upgrading to the latest firmware and with the battery fully charged, Yarbo is ready for its first job. You can either control it directly from the phone using the joystick and other on-screen controls, or you can pair the controller to it for a more hands-on approach. After Yarbo is switched on, it takes about 40 seconds to initialize and ready up. Hi, nice to meet you. Please wait 40 seconds for Yarbo to initiate. Ready to work. Emergency stop. Next thing to do here is press and hold the Yarbo button on the controller to begin the pairing process. Once the yellow light begins flashing, pairing is in progress and once it stabilizes and the controller vibrates, pairing is complete. To activate Yarbo, press and hold the select button for 3 seconds and this enables controlling it. Some important things to note before moving it is that you can adjust the direction and the angle of the discharge chute as well as the height of the housing for the scraper and the auger on the snowblower. I stuck to using the controller on the phone and the physical one for my first test since I didn't have much space to create a map for. Using the physical controller was a bit of a struggle for manually operating the snowblower. It's definitely nothing like driving a vehicle in a car racing game like you're probably used to with an Xbox controller. Honestly, I would rather avoid manually operating Yarbo altogether since it was intended for autonomous operation and to me, that's where its value lies. Something I noticed after using it for my first snow cleaning job was how much power it was able to produce. It was able to easily clear a densely packed sidewalk of dry snow without any issues. I had the battery charged to the maximum before starting to make sure I had enough juice for the whole job and was able to run it for over two hours continuously without running out of juice. Using Yarbo autonomously involves setting up a few more things. First, you'll have to install the RTK GPS navigation system. This, in combination with computer vision and sensors located on Yarbo, are what helps in ensuring centimeter level accuracy when Yarbo is operating without supervision. Yarbo uses satellite for self-location, while the RTK base uses the same satellite to compare signals sent to both. The real-time error calculation is then sent to Yarbo to improve its positioning and precision while operating. Now, there's a few ways that the RTK sets can be installed. You can either mount it on a roof, onto a wall, or onto the ground. Regardless of which method you decide to use, you'll want the antenna to have an unobstructed 120 degree view of the sky in order for it to work effectively. I haven't set one up myself yet, but there's a short video on the brand's website showing the entire process. After setting up the RTK GPS system, then it's time to find the best position to install the charging dock. You'll want to find the spot with the strongest GPS connection around the area you plan on using Yarbo. The docking station comes in a box similar to the universal body only much smaller. 
It only comes with a few parts that need to be assembled in order to use it. First off, there's the base, which consists of two parts that can be connected together very easily. Then there's the control unit, which has to be attached to the top of the base and then routed through the provided power station cable ramp all the way to a power outlet. This is where Yarbo will be parked whenever it's not in use and when charging without the AC adapter. Keep in mind that once a good spot has been found and the charging dock has been installed, moving it becomes a bit of a hassle. Now, this is because you'll need to redo the entire process of finding a good spot for it all over again. The next thing to do is draw out a map of the area you'll want Yarbo to clean, and the process for that pretty much involves manually moving the robot to form a map of the specified area. The throw direction of the discharge chute is also set during this map building process. Once that's all done, it'll be able to autonomously work with little to no supervision, which honestly is the best way to use it. You can find more detailed guides on setting up Yarbo autonomously through the links that I've added in the description below. Now, once a map is drawn, all that's left is to initiate a cleaning session through the app, and Yarbo will clear that area according to how the map was drawn. This also includes accurately avoiding no-go zones. We tested this out at a few places in Breckenridge where Yarbo had been set up to autonomously clear their driveways. In comparison to my initial test using the manual mode, this was a hundred times better since it was now truly a hands-off process. Yarbo was able to intuitively adjust the speed and the power of the Alger on the snowblower module, which was amazing to see. Imagine how a robot vacuum works. That's exactly how it felt to use Yarbo autonomously. The back to home recharge feature also worked really well here, and the robot was always able to accurately go back to the charging dock at the end of the session. Note also that Yarbo will return home by itself whenever the battery is low. Overall, it did a pretty solid job of autonomously clearing a few of the driveways it was mapped to clean. Believe it or not, there are two kinds of snow. There's dry and then there's wet snow. Dry snow refers to snow that has a low amount of moisture. It's usually very powdery and doesn't stick together. Wet snow, on the other hand, refers to snow with high amounts of water content. It's usually heavy and sticky, making it challenging to shovel or even drive in. When used to tackle dry snow, Yarbo on the S1 module works great, but when used to tackle wet snow, constant clogging of the discharge chute becomes an issue. In order to avoid dealing with this, you want to modify the snowblower module with something called a snowplow. It's an attachment which can be picked up alongside Yarbo and easily installed in front of the algers to essentially plow snow. We found that it works great for clearing wet snow sins. Those tend to be way less fluffy and much heavier. Now, I got to see a bit of a test run of the Lawnmower M1 module, which is what will replace the snowblower module during the summer for lawn maintenance. We weren't able to find anywhere with tall green grass to cut, but that's essentially what it does. It works in a similar fashion to the snowblower module, operating autonomously or manually as needed. The snowblower module is all that's available right now, but the lawnmower module is coming in May, so you can pre-order it if you're interested let me know down in the comment section what you guys think about this thing and if you would ever invest in something like this um, for your yard